Hi everybody, my name is Jack and today, the amazing digital circus. Today we will talk about whether Kane can create NPCs in this world. Does Jack know about Kane's abilities? We will talk about whether the digital circus is a game or not. What is the void and what can it mean? Sit back, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification and we will begin. The sweet melody of the intro song fades a bit. We again see these floating objects this time over a character we haven't seen before. This leads me to think that these objects are somehow tied to her. There's a player, two eyes, presumably canes, a teapot, a green pyramid, and a blue flower in a pot. This new character immediately seems confused, which tells us that she doesn't know where she is, which is strange considering that all the other characters we meet seem quite calm and seem to know why they're here. She sees a red exit door and runs to it for a brief moment, before it disintegrates and disappears. Remember this, it's important later. The flower pot crashes into the ground in front of her, further confirming that they are in a digital world or some game, because that's what happens when games glitch. Textures merge or collide randomly due to a programming or code error. As soon as we get a good shot of our new character, there's something I'd like to point out. Her outfit, compared to all the other characters, is very bright and colorful, consisting mostly of red and blue. It seems that the pattern is divided in half, with each side being the opposite of the other. The Amazing Digital Circus, 108. Upon seeing the appearance of this new character, Jax makes an interesting comment. Kane, is this one of your NPCs, or is it new? This quote is interesting for two reasons. It implies that Kane has the ability to create input NPCs into this world. Jax knows that Kane can do this, and knows about Kane's abilities. The fact that this character is mistakenly taken for an NPC is quite strange, considering how different she is from everyone else, being the most humanoid in the world. This also calls into question how often Kane inputs new and random NPCs into this world. Jack says this as if it is known to everyone, implying that it must happen quite often. Then Jax notes that they may have to redo the title song to include her, which seems pointless, doesn't it? I mean, just because she's new to this world doesn't mean they have to redo everything with her help. After all, it's just them. Either Jax is very picky about the theme of his show, or there is someone else on the side who is looking for discrepancies. Someone they have to deceive. Jax, in turn, also knows about the existence of this digital world. Maybe everyone does? Kane even seems surprised that the new character is here, or he's done it so many times that he's pretending to be surprised. After all, how did all the other characters get there? Were they there from the beginning, or were they also brought in? This brings us to a really interesting point. A new character clings to her head as if her life depends on it. Her dialogue here sounds like this. How do I take off this headset? This, combined with Kane's words, it looks like a new person has entered this world, paints a pretty strong picture in my mind. Suddenly I started to connect the pieces. This is a digital world. Let's say a game, for example. The mention of a headset immediately comes to my mind when it comes to a virtual reality headset, the kind that now launches games like Beat Saber. After Kane mentioned that a new person had entered this world, I'm inclined to think that this has happened before, presumably with other characters, as evidenced by Jax's remark. Just keep holding on to him. It worked for all of us. Obviously, it didn't. They are all people, stuck here, just like her. Each of them, we've all been through this, puts on a headset, puts on some strange headset, gets sucked into this digital world, the amazing digital circus, and now is trapped in a place where there is no way out. Does this mean that Kane is also a human? Or was he there from the very beginning? Apparently, this is supposed to be a family show, as they keep calling it, as evidenced by the swearing of the new character. Whether this show is literal, like on TV or a video game, is right now up in the air. It seems that there is evidence of both. When she asks Kane how to leave, he pauses for a moment and just floats there, not reacting. Maybe because he doesn't know either. Judging by the responses of the other people, you can't, and welcome to your new home, I would say that no one knows how to escape from this world. Jax tells the newbie that they've been here for many years, and if they are human, then either people really don't care that they're gone, 
or people have no idea about this program, except for those who created it. It is assumed that Kinger has been here longer than anyone else, which means he could have been the first. Kinger's first real line here sounds like this. Did someone say something about a collection of insects? Which sounds random, arbitrary, and like a throwaway line, but I know better. This could tell us something about the person he was before, like he studied insects, or just likes insects. The Amazing Digital Circus, 319. This scene tells us a little more about our character Gangla. Apparently someone broke his comedy mask, and judging by how his sad face exists when he's sad, I have a feeling he won't be too happy anytime soon. I wouldn't be surprised if all the traits of the main characters are related to their human counterparts. For example, maybe the human Gangla always wore a metaphorical, happy face, or something like that in the presence of others. Today, we have a new adventure for the newbie, huh? Every time someone new enters the digital world, they have a new adventure waiting for them? During Kane's tour of the circus grounds, we see a lot of usual places, such as the tent where the characters stay and do something. When listing the mentioned actions, Kane glitches for a moment. The grounds, where you have the opportunity to either go to the digital carnival or drown in the digital lake, although it is assumed that this is a program for children. During Kane's tour, we get acquainted with a mysterious area known as the Void. The Void seems to be an infinite space of white light. Kane sternly warns us that we do not dare to go into the Void and that even he does not know what is there. This statement could be a lie and Kane really knows what is hidden in the Void or it could be based on the truth and he honestly has no idea what is there. I sincerely believe that Kane may not know as much as we think because he cannot come up with anything in common with the exit, even a lie and because he seems to not really know what the void is or what is in it. I think Kane is struggling as much as everyone else. Thanks to this creepy tour, we also know that Kane has thousands of all-seeing eyes that watch every move of the characters. Amazing Digital Circus, 426. The new character sees the same red door again when Kane leads her back to the tent. She goes to ask what it is, before Kane takes her back to the safe tent. Also, apparently, Kane's methods of movement make her dizzy. Back in the tent, our new character asks about the exit door, to which everyone denies that the exit door exists at all. Kane unequivocally says that there is no magic door and tells her that she is probably experiencing digital hallucinations, which may or may not be real. After this conversation, Kane gets nervous and yells to make sure she understands what he's saying. You can see him fidgeting his fingers as if trying to hide something before switching the conversation to another side. 